you know, we need to know, the common people at large need to know this individual who's now here, who is he, what is his mission, and what we should react to, to his mission. What we see instead, people are saying, wow, a mighty healer has come. Let us take our blind, our sick, a person afflicted with leprosy, with disease, let us take him to him and he will heal them and praise God for this man healing. If this is what people are reacting to, then it becomes obvious to us, he's not making a claim he's someone special about being either God or son of God, whatever. He didn't make those claims. No, we, need not, we need to know from people. What did the people understand who he is? People's reaction is he's a prophet who's come to do mighty wonders and miracles, approved by God so that we can praise God. Right? But just because some people said that this, that's their perspective okay. doesn't mean that... Why did the, right the people have that perspective? They might have thought he was because he was doing, he was doing healings. He was, you okay. Know? Did they hear him saying who he was? Did he declare to the people, I am X, Y and Z? If you go back to the Old Testament... No, we can't, we can't, we can't. We can't 100% say he didn't no. declare. Do you what, know what, I mean? what did he declare to the people? Many things. Um, okay. Many did he declare that he was God on earth? That people should worship him? Mm. That he was the God of Israel? That he is Yahweh? Explicitly, by the way. Yeah. Because if you go to the Old Testament times, God of the Jewish nation explicitly said, I am God. There is no God before me, besides me. Clear. There's no one else. Worship me alone. Yeah. Worship me. That is an explicit message of God in the Old Testament times. If Jesus was somehow linked with being divine, yeah. what did he declare to the people? Why would he not have declared it as well if he was divine? Yeah. If it's so key to your salvation, you know, these things are so clear. God makes them clear so that on the day of judgment, there'd be no argument that it wasn't clear. Because in fact, people asked him, tell me who you are. Exactly. Who are you? And then he answered. Did they take from them that all oh, this is God on earth? Be careful what you say, because he's going to turn you into nothing if he wants to. He, just like that, he'll turn into a potato or, or a frog or whatever it might be, because he's God on earth. Did they have that perception? Did his disciple have that perception? Did his enemies have that perception? Because anyone who knew truly, because he explained to himself, they would not even say anything against him because God on earth, even that is even possible, that God comes down as a man and so on on this earth. But this is not what we see in history. People's reaction and perception was different. Yeah, because... So what did you find that, so far? That's what man... That's what I'm just finding. That's what man is like, you know. We, it's like we, we want to understand God so badly, but a lot of times we actually miss out who God actually is and what he's trying to tell people. Yeah. So why, why does it say broad is, the, broad is the way to destruction, but narrow is the way to God? Sure. You know, because many people are lost, many people are deceived. There's a devil in this world mm -hmm. that is blinding the eyes of people. Great. Mm -hmm. And so you need God to... You need to God to, to explicitly to say eyes. his message yeah. without any ambiguity. In a, in a way that you will understand it. Because God's, okay. God's in clarity. God's God's simple speaks, clarity. God speaks to everybody differently. No, God should declare his message in clear... Why are you saying God should? Are you God to say God should? Okay, imagine now God sent you as prophet and the discussion that we had for so far, did you understand that he's a prophet of God? No one did because you made no such claim. If God's intention or his plan was that you are here as a prophet of God, you need to make it clear and yeah, open so to if everyone. A, if a lion steps foot here, does the lion have to say, I'm a lion? It's a poor analogy to make. If a lion comes here, then people are obviously, no, not people, all the others, that this is a dangerous animal. So if a person like Christ is here, it is not obvious as a human being that you're God. Do, do you look like God? Do you look like a son of God in any way, shape or form? You don't. So when Jesus was, one second, one second. When Jesus was here on this earth, did he any way, shape or form, Look like God. We both ah. Exactly. So then you can't according really to the Jewish people, according to the Jewish people, who Jesus was sent to, well, some part, some specific group of Jewish people, not all of them, they don't think God is like an European with black, blonde hair, blue eyes, or a Palestinian like Jesus, right? So they would not have taken Jesus Christ as God anyway, or Son of God. So it is important for that individual to make it clear who he is. And what his mission is, his message is. Why, why, why did this? Why? Because why, even even the disciples, his inner group, 
they didn't fully get the revelation of God themselves as well until Jesus fulfilled what he had to do on the cross and then they, they, they start receiving the Holy Spirit and then they, they understand all the things that like he said. You know sometimes your parents, when you're younger, they say something to you, you don't understand it there and then. But as you get older and you go through life, then you begin to understand what they've said. And that's the same thing with God. There's God a, is speaking many times. There's a slight problem with this. We're not listening, we're not hearing. And I pray hopefully one day that you all will know Jesus Christ. Because There's a slight Jesus problem with this analogy. When God sends a prophet and a messenger, he sends it primarily initially to the, disciple, the people of that time. He's not going to send to someone and they had no clue who he was and five billion or million or one thousand years later say, ah, he's a prophet of God. It serves no purpose because the purpose of sending a prophet to a nation is to correct them, guide them, instruct them to holiness and righteousness and say, this is right, this is wrong, this is true, this is false, because they need to be saved themselves. So if Christ came and no one knew who he was, how they can even follow his message. So it is not really sensible. People did know who he was. Okay, what today, did people know who he was? What did people think who he was? So when he, when he died on the cross... No, when he was alive, during his teachings that people received, what were their perception and understanding about him? Well, some people thought he's a prophet, some people thought he's a rabbi, some people... Some, I think Why? He said he's the son of God. Why? None of them thought he was God. That's that's fine. It doesn't. No. Mean why? Why do they have wrong impression? If he because truly we is. Often, we often get God wrong. That's no, the, no, that's no, the no, point no. I'm no, 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 no. If a lion, if a lion, just often, to take his example, often, if a lion, no, if a lion, it's true because when you look at no. the, when you, okay, because if, if a lion let's, came here, let's are you going to think, oh, this is look like a deer to me? When you look at Islam, look, look, when you look at Islam, the majority of the world are not Islam, are they? So, so many people are deceived. Do you get what I'm saying? No, that's many people are not learning about Islam. That's why they don't know. For it's example, if you don't know anything the about thing. it, if you don't, if you don't seek Jesus Christ, wait, wait, if wait. you don't ask Him into your life, it's not about seeking. Him, no, it is about seeking. No, we are talking seeking. about the when people you you Jesus know. was interacting with. They're not going to sit there and think, oh, let me contemplate who he was. Yeah. Jesus is to declare. Why would they not contemplate who he is? This did, guy's healing the sick. Did he's he, raising the dead. And he's what, casting out devils. Never seen. Who never did he, seen before. Who did he say he was? It, do, it doesn't matter whose permission. Oh, I'm who, telling you what he was doing. No, who did he say he was? He said before Abraham, I am. And what did they think what it means? They thought he's blaspheming God. No, they did not. They thought he's blaspheming no, God. So they picked no, up stones. No. They picked up stones to throw at him. At one point, Jesus Christ actually made a difference. That difference will be there until the end of the world if the Bible is still there. They wanted to bless, crucify him, kill him because he blasphemed. He says, for what reason? He even then said, okay, fine. Isn't it written in your law that you are called Elohim, Ben Elion, you are called Elohim, sons of the Most High. And I didn't say, I didn't say, except I am Ben Elion or son of God. So why do you want to stone me? So he even said in your scripture, Psalms 82, yeah, yeah, yeah. God identifies or calls human judges as Elohim. And if you, he identifies and calls human beings as judges that you are God's Elohim. If you're one of them and you came to the people, I am Elohim. They can't say you're blaspheming because God calls them so. But it doesn't make them God. They would understand it doesn't mean God. Jesus said, I didn't even say that so that you can be confused. I said, I am a Ben Elion, son of Elion, son of God. Like you are son of God. You are son of God. Ep Ephraim is son of God. David is son of God. Solomon is son of God. Adam is son of God. No, 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 no. He clearly mentioned this phrase, son of God. It has nothing to do with divinity. Son of God is a term. Son of God to the people is a righteous individual yeah that's them remember we're talking about historical time frame when he was interacting with people they knew son of god is not someone who is god and worthy of worship and so on yeah it means a righteous person righteous persons so when he responded to them they had nothing else to say in return he rebutted them debunked their claim so the Bible does not in any way demonstrate from a historical narrative that Jesus was walking as God on earth. Instead, he was identifying who the true God was. He said, the one up there, worship him. 
Oh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And he also said, he said, I am the way. Wait, wait, wait. We'll, we'll address that. When it comes to identifying God, who did he say? Your will be done. Your kingdom come. So did he make it clear who you should worship? Up there, the one in heaven. Yes, but when, when, did, the, when the disciples before, bowed before, down on their knees and were bowing down worshiping what, him, one at a time. Why, as a prophet, or oh, you saying he's a let's, prophet? Why did he just reject them? No, no. Let, to, let's let's, let's take that. Hallelujah. Okay, we'll adjust that, inshallah, one at a time. He said, he said, he said, no problem. I know she has to go. Take no problem. Just give us few minutes. When he says, this is eternal life, that they, my disciples, and everyone else, they should know. You, the Father, you are the only true God, and I am the one you have sent me. He made it abundantly clear, without any ambiguity. The only true God is not three persons, as the Christians say. Not three persons, because Father is not three persons. How many persons is the Father? Just to clar clarify that point. The Father is how, how many persons is the Father himself? Father. How many persons is the Father? What do you mean by how many persons? Okay, you are one person. Yeah. The Son, Jesus Christ, is one person. Okay. The Father is one person. Yeah. So when Christ says the only true God is the Father, that's identifying the Father being one person. Yeah, but you, you understand one, you're, you're talking about oneness in a different way. Do you have a family? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Do you have a family? This, do you have a family? I do, I do. That's one family. It's one family. But there's different persons within that family. Right. Do you get what how, so how many people to, in the family? You need to understand the difference between a, a different kind of oneness. Good. There's a different understanding. So there are many gods together in one. one person. So we, we got you there. Mean, oneness could, is marriage. What does it so, say? The two shall become one. They one, one. So one, you that. two people, yeah. but they're one. So so, we yeah, but about? still, so still. That's what you need to understand that there's different concepts of oneness. You know what? I agree with you. And I'll tell you why I agree with you. You believe in three gods working together as one family. No, I believe they are one. I, I believe what the scriptures say. One family? They Did I say one. two families? No, 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 I said one, they are one. one. No, one family. No, it doesn't say that in our scriptures. Okay, but they are one. do you agree father these and son? Okay, do you agree father and son is a family? No, I believe they are one. That's what I believe. Do you agree father and son, mother and daughter, this is family? Oh, you, you talk about in just... No, talk about the concepts, relationship. Father and son, father, son is a family. You believe in Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. That's a family. So you believe in how many families? Three? No. Two? No. One family. But how many gods? Three gods in that no, family. It's one, <laughs> one God. These three are one. One God? When, when, when two, okay. When two, are they one God? When two people get listen, when listen, it's because you guys you're not you're not understanding the spiritual what happens in the spirit. Right? When two people get married, the Bible says they come together as one. Yeah. So they they're one now. There's two persons within Good. that marriage. But I have no one. I have no problem so with that. That's the concept that I'm trying to get you to understand. But I have so no problem when, with when that. When you say in Father, Son, Holy Spirit, it's one. You need to understand. one what? It's just one. One, one what? God. One God. Good. So you said one God, right? So let's let's understand something. Finally, you are saying the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit together. When they're together in unity that's one god no i'm saying these three are one that's no, what i'm saying no they make one god no these three are one one what they are god one god yes there's only one god good so together that's one god individually how much of god are they it's not they're not individual they're, they are they're, individual when, when the bible separates when, them the yeah, bible says the son speaks by persons and functions but right. they are one is the father one god or one third god He's got one third God. They are God. You don't, is, is the Father when, when, one God when or one third God? Married, you don't separate them and go, is the, do you know what I mean? It's just a person. Is the it's Father, world, okay, sim function. simple question. Is the Father one God? Is the Father one God? They are God. That's my answer to you. These three. Father, okay. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay. These three are one. Just to explain yeah. one human, one human, one human, one human. Together, how many humans? There's one human? Four of us. Can we say one human? No, because there's four of them. Right. The Father is God. The Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. One God, one God, and one God. Together, how many gods? Three. 
Father, Son, Holy Spirit. See, we are one human. You know it is. You don't, we are one human. You don't, understand the, you don't understand the spiritual side of it. And you look, it's, it's, it's one of them. Look, even the even it says as well, the Trinity in itself, it's, it's a mystery. These things, is, and that's the mystery of God. It's not a mystery. You know, you it's clear to me. No, it is. You can't it's actually. You know it's what? clear to me. You guys think God, Crystal God, clear. You can't actually box God. No one's trying to box God. You can't no one's trying to box God. That's what I love about the mystery. No, I'm not. I'm saying this is how God has revealed himself and that's just what it is. No. That's what I'm saying. Who did God reveal that to? Jesus didn't say like that. He said God is the one who is the Father only. It's revealed through the scriptures. It's revealed through the scriptures. No, no, no. The, Genesis, the, the, of God the Bible, the of the Jesus Christ, both disagrees with you. No. Because Jesus Christ says the only true God is one person, the Father. Which is a person. No, I think we're, we're going to one what? One, one what? Thank you for the discussion. Okay, she made, okay, you know what? She has a brilliant point. We have to all understand that. Jesus said, I am the Father of one. That means one God, right? That means they're one. Does that mean they're one God? Yeah. Do you remember? Let me just finish this. Do you remember? Do you remember? Jesus said, just like I am the Father of one, you are also going to be one with us. So you're also part of one, this oneness. He gave a type God of lived in us. Hmm? God lived in yeah. Us. So just like the Father and the Son are one, you are also one with them. Does that make you God? We are the yes, body but of it's what, it, that's what I'm saying. It's that's what I'm saying. There's different types of oneness. That's, right. that's what I'm saying. Jesus says so just the, as, the oneness just of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit just is different as. to the oneness of me being with God. There that's can be. There can be. And that's what I'm saying. You need to understand oneness you know, is not just one. No, concept. you have you have a fair point. You have a fair point. Correct point. There can be different type of oneness, but the slight problem is Jesus uses the word just as I and the Father are one, so shall you be. So it's the same type of oneness. If, if, God, ca if God came and said to you that, that it's the Father, that Son, Holy exactly Spirit, exactly. if that's how he revealed himself to you, what would you say? If God reveals, I'm just asking if that's how if God revealed. reveals to me and said I am Father, Son, Holy Spirit, I will say you are Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That's what you've revealed to me. Then, then but, that means this whole us having this whole. Um, but the problem, it, there's no that's point. The understand. problem is, is because that's, that's the question God, that I asked you. How did Jesus reveal who he was? And you said some said he was a prophet. Why? He, no he, one identified him as you, God. If you yeah. if you want to know who Jesus is, yeah. believe he died on the cross, was buried and no. resurrected. No, listen, I'm, I'm, giving, I'm giving, giving you the keys. No, it's, believe he died the right on the keys. cross, was buried, no, resurrected. Believe. Repent of go your sins Bible, and trust in him. Exactly. And I tell you the truth, Mansour, mm. you will know Jesus Christ. I know it already. Your life and he'll use you. You'll convert all these Muslims here. Okay. You're, do you do you love Christ? The gospel to them, do you love Christ? And they'll change their heart. Do you love Christ? That's my prayer for you. Do man. do you love Christ? I'm gonna leave on that note. Okay. Do you love Christ? I love him with all my okay. heart. Okay. Is he self-sufficient? He's everything to me. Is he self-sufficient? What do you it's mean by that? Ah, the, the point to take on as you're going because I'm not gonna keep yeah, you any longer yeah. because it's not fair that I keep you on longer. Yeah, self-sufficient means you are independent. You don't need anything else or anyone else. By you, you are totally self-sufficient. You are yourself enough. So, for example, I am not self-sufficient because I needed life to be given to me. I need to eat food, drink water, breathe in oxygen. I am dependent. God, by definition, has to be independent and self-sufficient. No, because... What? I, I, let, me, let me explain to explain, you. Explain. Explain. Let me explain. 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 So, God, God is love, yeah? What? Loving, listen, yeah, listen. loving. God, God, I'm, I'm sort of stable, yeah, by the way. He has to be self-sufficient. Right, cool. God is love. So if he God if God is independent, when you love, love is an action. So if he's independent, you can't just love yourself. So that would disqualify God. But when you have the, the triune Father, Son, Holy Spirit, it's the union of love within there. So principle. because God is love, if you was just by yourself in this world, you can't you're actually loving. love. You're not loving. Because this, love is an action. This this so point. That, that's why even the Father, Son, Holy Spirit yeah. talks about the love of God. Yeah. But if God was just on his own, okay. he can't love nothing. Sure. So there very, wouldn't be love. Okay. Very interesting point. It was this, what I'm talking. It's like. Yeah. May I? You're not going to understand. May, may I? May I give you some thoughts on this? Right. This one, this particular example was used by William Lane Craig and various others even before him. But there's a slight logical problem with this kind of explanation you see try to understand this you see God is the creator of the heavens and the earth you are saying before he created anything you can't call him the creator by by your own consistent logic okay so before God created anyone 
had any relationship of creation, is he the creator? Does he need, he can still be the creator without creating anything, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Without forgiving anyone, can he still be forgiving? Yeah. Good. So he doesn't need an object of relationship to express his attribute of forgiveness or his attribute of creating. But you don't wait, 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 wait. Because love. if I'm, I'm explaining, if God did not possess the attribute of love, if he did not possess it, yeah. even if you have an object, can he love someone? Say that again, say that again. So imagine there, like, you know what? There is God and there is the Son and this the Holy Spirit. If God the Father did not possess the quality of love, can he love the Son? No, if he didn't possess it, how can he? He cannot. How, how so can what he... is necessary? The object or the attribute first? Simple yeah. question. What is necessary is to have that quality. If you did not have the quality, it doesn't matter if you have the Son or the creation, you can't express that love. If you did not have the quality of love, the attribute of love within you in, in the first place, you cannot love someone. So God, he needs to have it first before he can express it to someone. No, but you need to be able to express it as well because love is an what, no, no, what I'm saying is, it is a pre prerequisite first that you have to have it, even if you have, look, even if you have, I'm saying, look, look at the opposite. You have the son, you have the son and you have the Holy Spirit and God doesn't have love. Can he express his love? He can't. So object is redundant here. The, yeah? going, the only going. way he can express his love if he has it first. But mm. then what if both of them can coincide at the no, same no, they, time? It, 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 the same way as when he, when, look, he when, when God when God when God made the heavens and is, the earth and all, is all God, time matter when that came into existence. I will I will all at the same I will time. So I will expand. You, you 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 have to have it in you no, no. and you still have to okay, display. I will expand. God is merciful. Before he created anyone, who is he merciful to? Mm. No humans, right? God is someone of vengeance, like Old Testament says. He's, he, is, he punishes the wicked. So he is wrathful. Yeah. Who did he express his wrath and yeah. vengeance to or against? Yeah, there did. was no creation there. Yeah, he did. They didn't need to he because they have a perfect union. No, so. do, you, do, you, do you accept that his mercy, his compassion, his love, his forgiveness, he cannot express it according to your understanding unless there's someone else to express but what we agreed you don't need the object that means you can have the attribute of love knowledge compassion inherently. forgiveness inherently without an object to be there first that's why william lem craig even though he's very very intellectual but he made a very big blunder here so did many of your philosophers like um, um i don't know name them and, and belittle them many philosophers in the past because human beings are valuable. So when it comes to this kind of, you know, rebuttal against like, oh, the reason why you need to have a trinity because you need to have this relationship, it doesn't work that way. God is, look, before anyone worshiped God, was he God? Or did he become God when someone worshiped him? No, he's God already. He's God already. Yeah. So you don't need someone to uh, worship yeah. first yeah. and because a God is a being who is worshiped. A deity, God, Oh, God is a being that's worshipped. So yes. then we worshipped him when he, in the beginning. No, that's what I'm saying. You don't need anyone else. Said he's a God that, that's no, I am saying if somebody went with this argument that you presented, that you have to have an object to express that. No, I'm saying that love has to be it has to be displayed. But we explain why it doesn't have to. We explain why it doesn't need to. No, you explain why I think you explain why other things don't. No, I explain even love. If God didn't possess love first, he cannot love the son. Yeah, but even if, if the son if, was if, there, and if he didn't, if he didn't have some, if he didn't yeah. have something to love, how can he love that? How, he did. how can that love be? Actually? How can God be creative if there was nothing to create? He can still. Okay, let me give an example. Imagine you end up in a nice island. There's no other human being. Does that mean you're not compassionate? You're not kind? No, you're not fair? Wait, 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 wait. That does that mean you're not just? Just because you can't express any of your attributes? No, but God's created me, so I would have so, really had the, so, you know, the so, love and the... So what you are now telling me and us, you already possess those attributes, even though they're, not, given to me even though they're not expressed. No, given so, to me from God. No problem. Because you possess those attributes given to you by God, the expression doesn't need to be expressed to make you to understand that you're kind and compassionate and just and fair or someone else because you know it already because you have the attributes mm. likewise 
God doesn't need to express his love to someone to show he's loving because he already has that attribute of love. Inherently. 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 Excuse me, he has it, but we have to understand it. It's not inherent in us. No, God possesses it inherently. Yeah, he does. That's the argument. But we, we don't know okay. that we do. So the, this, question, this question came to understand who really God is. God is self-sufficient, independent being. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. Was the Father self-sufficient and independent? Yeah. Is Jesus independent and self-sufficient? Yeah. Take care, my friend. Yeah? We'll talk again. Yeah? Take no. care.